Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Industrial Ethernet Week by Harding. We're coming to you today from our studio here in Illinois. Today is day two of our Industrial Ethernet Week. Yesterday, we explored the market surrounding Industrial Ethernet, what's driving the growth, how it's becoming prominent communication protocol, how it relates to legacy protocols, and most importantly, how end users can benefit from Industrial Ethernet. Today, we'll focus on the technology side of the market and how to select the right Ethernet technology for your application. We'll also discuss how industry megatrends such as miniaturization are pushing innovation in our markets. At any point today, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat. Tomorrow is our last and final session of Industrial Ethernet Week, and it focuses on single pair Ethernet and its emerging role in industrial applications. Today, we have a great panel of product managers here to present to you on our technology portfolio, and I'd like to start by introducing our very first speaker, Arnold. Thank you, Casey, for the great introduction. Hello, everyone from Harding North America headquarter, and welcome to this Industrial Ethernet Week Day 2 within our Digital Experience Center. My name is Arnold Chinyawanji within the product management team, and it's truly a pleasure to be with you today. So the topic of the day is the right miniaturized industrial ethernet connectivity. So in the next 60 to 90 minutes, we're going to talk about some market trends and then how we at Harding approach innovative miniaturized solution without compromising the robustness and the high quality of our product. In fact, while increasing the functionalities. And finally, you will learn more on how efficient and user-friendly our solution are on the field for field installer. But before we start, we would like to say one thing. Your voice matters to us. We welcome your feedback. This is our first edition of Industrial Ethernet Week, and the second one next year will take your feedback into consideration. In fact, your feedback will shape the next edition next year. Now, back to business. For those of you who missed day one, we had a panel discussion talking about the trend of industrial ethernet taking over the field bus communication protocol. So if you take a look six years back in 2016, the number of yearly installed connected nodes for the field bus communication protocol was 58%, while industrial ethernet was 38%. Five years later, the field bus communication protocol dropped to 28%. This is a 30% decrease, while industrial ethernet that encompass Profinet, Ethercat, Sisalink, gain 27%. So many reasons for the growth of industrial ethernet market. And I won't go into the details, but some of the main reasons. First, the proliferation of IoT, industrial internet of things, where all the devices are interconnected. Second, the growing adoption of ethernet technology within the automotive industry giving all the application that require high bandwidth, such as the radar, the LiDAR sensors, or the high resolution display. And finally, the rising demand of unifying an efficient communication network between the IT and the OT space. So all this trend will benefit Industry 4.0 and make our industrial factories smarter more efficient and leaner. So another trend we see is the miniaturization. So if you look around you, you will see device are getting, device and connectors are getting smaller and smaller while functionalities keep increasing. And this is one of the biggest challenge high tech companies are facing right now. So what are the main key drivers? First, the density, the need of compact solution becomes critical for more uh, for many applications. Second, the need of reducing cost. So if you think about automotive market, the cable assemblies and the connectivity represent a large amount of the cost within the car. So reducing the size will not impact not only the cost, but also the efficiency and the performance of the car in terms of gas mileage. Finally, 
the efficiency. Removing the complexity is important for a better outcome or productivity. Now, I will have the first poll question for you. What is the most popular and widely used ethernet connectors? And please feel free to online chat box with the link to respond to this question. And I will give you 20 seconds. You have the choice between the M8, M12 circular connectors, the D sub, option B, RG45, option C, and LC, option D. RG45 clearly is the most popular ethernet connectors on earth. So RJ stands for register jack, invented by Bell Labs in 1973. So this connector was primarily used for the non-industrial ethernet connectivity. Over the years, the connector has been used for industrial application. So this is just a snapshot of the deep portfolio we have with the RJ45. Here, for example, is the RJ45, the IP20. Here we have the very boot where you can use, leverage all the different orientation, left, right, up and down. Here is the RJ45 multi features that you can use with that tool on the field. And you will learn more about this in the second part of our session. Or the V14 IP67 for more regularized environment. Some may ask, is it the perfect fit for all industrial application? And the response is no. So for all application with high shock and vibration, like within transportation, even the most ruggedized RJ45 has some limitation. And this is why I would like to introduce the first innovative miniaturized solution the IX industrial. So this connector has been developed to address the performance gap of RJ45 in a very harsh environment. And let me start by saying the IX industrial is fully compliant with the RJ45 in terms of functionalities. So it complies with the CAT6 spec and can go up to 10 gigabyte per second, but not the footprint as you can see here, the IX is much, much smaller than the RJ45. Now, I would like to talk about some of the benefits of the RJ, of the IX industrial. So if you think about the weak latch of the RJ45, with the IX industrial, with the audible click, you have an 80 Newton retention force. Second, the density. If you look side by side, IX industrial is 75% smaller than the RJ45. In fact, if you put five RJ45 side by side, it's equivalent to nine IX industrial. Then if you think about the mating cycle, unlike the 750 mating cycle for RJ45, the IX industrial gives you up to 5,000 mating cycle it makes this even suitable for the medical market. And finally, the high shock and vibration. This complying with the railway standard, which is the most stringent standard of industrial market. And now I'm pleased to welcome my colleague, Peter, who will talk about the full solution offering of this IX. Peter. Yep, thank you, Arnold, and hello, everyone. My name is Peter Pollack, and I am a product manager responsible for cable assembly solutions at Harding. So as I mentioned, I introduced the IX Industrial at Harding. We also have a full offering of IX Industrial cable assemblies uh, where we support various different configurations where we could have assemblies with IX Industrial on each end of the assembly, like the one we see over here, and also configurations where we have IX Industrial on one end and then a different connector, for example, an RG45 on the other end. And this is extremely useful when we try to connect a device that already has IX industrial 
um, integrated into it to other devices that support uh, a traditional Ethernet connector such as RG45. With assemblies like that, uh, this is extremely easy uh, to achieve. In addition to assembly supporting um, Ethernet with IX Industrial, we do also offer standard offering in Signal IX Industrial uh, products. I uh, can go back to the other slide. In addition to that, uh, with standard lengths, we do also have a great flexibility of customized solutions, whether it would be a customized length or also solutions with additional connectors uh, such as M12s or even DSAPs for signal applications. All of our IX industrial assemblies come as a standard with PVC, PUR, and FRNC cable jackets. And we do also have additional options of multicolor cables to give more flexibility uh, to our customers. Beyond IX industrial, Harding also has a full offering and supports traditional RG45 cable assemblies since this connectivity technology is still widely used to interconnect industrial devices in the field. And Harding has multiple different flavors of these assemblies. From standard IP20 RG45 overmoded cord sets to RG45 variable, which are very innovative assemblies that allow cable and connector to be bent to change the angle of the connector in four different directions. So we can have up, down, left, and right direction, and this can be changed at any given time. In addition to standard IP20 assemblies, we do have more ruggedized RG45 cable assembly solutions, such as Harding Pushpool and Harding Han 3A RG45 and hybrid solutions that allow power and data to, me, to be communicated through a single cable. Pushpool locking technology also allows for a very quick and easy connection and disconnection process due to its innovative inner locking system. While Han 3A style connectivity provides a latching lever that gives a very reliable and secure connection uh, for any type of an industrial application. All cable assemblies variants come with a standard cable jackets like PVC and PUR, and they can support anything between CAT5 all the way to CAT6, a 10 gigabit per second data communication. And with that, I would like to invite Arnold back um, to the stage. Thank you, Peter. As I mentioned before, that the market where high shock and vibration are critical, the IEX industrial is suitable. And the transportation is one of them. Our IEX industrial is used here for the passenger information systems, for the wireless access point, and for the IP camera where density and robustness are critical. We launched these connectors almost three to four years ago, and we have many customers using our IX industrial connectors, and it's getting a lot of traction of the market, but we still have many customers out there who don't know that this solution exists. And this is why we believe we are still in the early phase of when it comes to the technology adoption curve because the potential is huge. So we encourage you to reach out to us and visit harding.com for more information about this technology. Now I have the second poll question for you. What is the most popular widely used industrial ethernet connectors within automation application? Again, please feel free to use the online chat box with the link to respond to this question. You are on point with the M8, M12 uh, connectors. As the most popular industrial ethernet connectors within automation market. So according to our estimation, the global market of M12 and M8 is divided as such. Back in 2021, 70% of the connectors were the M12 and 30% M8. So we expect by 2030 for M12 and M8 respectively 60% and 40%. So clearly there's a trend toward miniaturization with M8 growing by 10% by 2020, by 2030. 
And this led to our circular connector portfolio. So we do offer a large variety of circular connectors that cover power, data, signal, and hybrid. So our portfolio starts with the MA through the M23 with all the different coding you can think about. The A code for the actuators and sensor application. The B code for application using field bus communication protocol. The D code for application with data transmission up to 100 megabyte. The X code where you have the shielding for high speed data transmission up to 10 gigabyte. The L code for DC power application with voltages up to 63 volt. The S and the K code for AC power application with power up to 630 volt and current up to 16 amps. Yes, we do have a deep portfolio of circular connectors, but today I would like to talk to you about M12 magnetics. So this connector illustrates well how we at Harding approach innovation by removing complexity. So every connector needs some magnetic such as capacitor, transformer on the PCB module for great signal integrity. So instead of having the magnetics as the transformer and the capacitor on the PCB board, we have the transformer embedded within the receptacle. So the connector looks bulky on the receptacle, but it saves up to 30% space within the PCB module because the transformer, it's embedded inside the connector. So this is a great solution, an ethernet switch that showcase the benefit of M12 within magnetics. So first, on the PCB board inside, the customer was able to save up to 30% space within the PCB compared to the traditional M12. Second, you can stack many connectors and leverage our push-pull features you will learn more about in the second session. So as a result, removing the complexity help the customer achieve its goal with the size constraint. The second connector I would like to talk to you today about is the M12 Y code, which is a hybrid solution. So three main reasons why customer like and use the solution. First is the density. It's like using, taking the M12 L code, which is a power solution, adding with the M12 D code, which is a connector that transmits data up to 100 megabyte, and gives you the M12 Y code and still remain and keep the same form factors, M12. Second, the cost reduction, instead of using two discrete cable and connector, you use one and you can save up to 40% of your cost. Last but not least, the deployment speed. So dealing with two cable and connectors instead of one reduce significantly the labor time. As a result, you have the M12 connector form factors that provide you data and you have the shielding here for the signal integrity that can transmit data up to 100 megabyte and you have the power pin. So what option do we have for the full solution? And I would like to invite again, my colleague, Peter. So Harding completes the vast offering of circular M8 and M12 options with ready to use cable assemblies. We offer cable assemblies for high-speed ethernet utilizing the M12 X code connectivity and also have solutions for lower speeds like M12 D code that can support, as Arnold mentioned, up to 100 megabit per second. We do also introduce the Y code version that Arnold went into the details that combines ethernet at 100 megabit per second and power to deliver data and power simultaneously uh, to the application. Harding also offers finished cable assemblies that utilize smaller M8 connectors to follow the miniaturization trend. And as mentioned earlier, Harding has a great flexibility when it comes to offering customized solutions, whether that would be a customized length or also customized connections. 
So we also have a great example of mixed configurations where customers simply need a M12 connector on one end and RJ45 on the other end, since we could be connecting devices that use M12 on one end to devices that utilize RJ45 connectors. Multiple different cable versions are available with PVC, PUR, cable jackets, and also we can provide overmolded and non-overmolded options uh, depending on customer's preference. Yep, back to you, Arnold. Thank you, Peter. And let's us switch the gear here and talk about another innovative miniaturized solution. And this is a T1 industrial that will support the single pay ethernet technology. For those of you who don't know the single pay ethernet technology that will contribute, this is a technology that will contribute significantly within the industry 4.0. So before we talk about the T1 industrial, let me explain why SPE it's important and what is SPE? So when you look at this automation pyramid, within the IT space, at the cloud and the supervisory level, it's dominated by the standard ethernet. Within the OT space here below, at the control PLC level, it's dominated by the industrial ethernet communication protocol. At the field device level, at the bottom of the pyramid, it's dominated by the field bus communication protocol. So let us immerse ourselves into the factory flow and remove all the abstracts so you understand what I'm talking about here. Like I mentioned, within the IT space here, we have the standard ethernet represented with the yellow line. When you go to the OT space at the control level, it's represented by the blue line. At the fill device level, you have all the different field bus communication protocol, CAN bus, Profi bus, Cicilink, represented by the red line. Now you have the first challenge, the need of unifying a communication protocol between the IT and the OT space, because you have the blue line, industrial ethernet, and the red line, the field bus communication. So the second challenge are those getaway you have here. That serve as a liaison between the two network. And finally, the bandwidth trade-off challenge at the field device level between the bandwidth and the reach that the field bus cannot address. So the Singapore Ethernet address all those challenges. First, unifying a more efficient network within the Ethernet communication protocol across the board. Second, there's no need to have getaways instead of having switch, switches to support many devices at the field device level. And finally, the single pair Ethernet addressed the trade-off challenge between the bandwidth and the reach. So it can deliver 10 megabyte and one at one kilometers at the same time. So what is single pair ethernet? So if you go, you want to reach with a standard ethernet 100 megabyte, you need two twister pair of wire. When you want to go to the gigabyte level, you need four twister pair of wire bi-directional. So the single pair ethernet is a game changer where you need one twister pair that can deliver up to one gigabyte per second. In terms of reach, the single pair ethernet at 10 megabyte gives you up to one kilometers. In fact, it can go up to 1.7 kilometers according to the chipset manufacturer. At 100 megabyte and one gigabyte, it can reach up to 40 meters. The 10 gigabyte is still in development. In short, the SPE serve as a platform that will not only enable a bi-directional communication among the field device level, the supervisory level, and the data centers, but it solved a bigger challenge, which is a trade-off I mentioned before between the bandwidth and the reach. So all the communication protocol we're using right now, Profinet, CAN bus, Ethercat, Cicilink, will give you either the bandwidth or the reach. 
Let me give you an example so you understand exactly the challenge I'm talking about. So if you take the CC link and you want to have a 10 megabyte bandwidth, the reach will be 100 meters. Now, if you want to go over one kilometers, the reach and the bandwidth will decrease to 156 kilobyte. So for the first time in the industrial application, you will have a communication protocol that deliver 10 megabyte and a reach of over one kilometers. And now I'm pleased to introduce our T1 industrial portfolio. So Harding did pioneer the T1 industrial connectors that will support the SPA. And it's worth mentioning that these connectors has been standardized and approved by all the three major committees, the IEEE, the IEC, and the TIA. And as we speak, we have an ongoing project with the ODVA. So this connector has also been adopted by over 50 well-known company. So now here we have the IP20 T1 industrial. Here we have the M8 sat in with the T1 industrial interface. Here we have the IP67 with the M8 form factors. Here we have the M12 form factor T1 industrial. And below here we have the receptacle. And here on the right inside, we have the M8 hybrid, where you have two pin for the power and two pin for the secure ethernet. So we offer a full solution end-to-end -end cable assembly with the T1 industrial. So for more information, please reach out to us or visit harding.com. So this concludes the second part of this session. And now, you will have the opportunity to learn on how efficient and user-friendly our solution are. So for the third part, I would like to invite my colleague, Goda. Uh, thank you, Arnold, and hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Goda. I'm one of the product managers here at Harding. Um, I want to take a moment. If you guys have any questions from the single pair Ethernet or any of the other technologies Arnold uh, has mentioned, feel free to add those questions in the chat. Um, at this point, we want to shift our focus to the innovative installation technologies Harding offers. So these are technologies that ensure deployment of Ethernet systems is easy, fast, and of course, uh, reliable. With that said, uh, the success of industrial ethernet is closely linked to the availability of RJ45 connectors that can be assembled quickly and easily. And at this point, I'd like to invite Peter back up uh, because he mentioned some really um, great cable assemblies and end-to-end -end solutions that Harding can offer. But can you speak a little bit to when maybe a, a full end-to-end -end solution uh, is not uh, the best uh, technology to use? Sure. Um, one example of that would be trying to route and deploy a fully finished cable assembly um, in a situation where we have a very tight spaces and limited space. And in a lot of those cases, it just it's not possible to do so because of the size of the connectors that you simply may not be able to fit through very tight spaces or openings. Yeah, that's a great point, right? So sometimes you just need the cable and then to attach the connector in field. And for that reason, Harding about 20 years ago uh, developed the first tool list um, RJ45 connector is the field installable connector that doesn't require any special crimped tooling, right? So anyone with a standard toolbox would be able to assemble these connectors in field. Uh, and that connector right there actually is still used today, sold worldwide, and really remains uh, mostly unchanged. Um, and again, used in a variety of industries and, and applications. Um, but in true innovative fashion, Harding has not stopped uh, taking a look at these products and seeing what more they can do. So with that, we'd want to, we want to share uh, some additional new technologies, the latest and greatest in installation uh, or, or field attachability when it comes to uh, Ethernet connectors. So one of the products I would like to share with you is the RJ45 multi-feature uh, solution. So Gora, this really looks like just another field attachable connector. Um, are there any differences here? Yeah, I'm really glad you asked, Peter. So again, it's been a while since Harding launched that, that first RJ45 uh, field installable connector. So we've had some time to think about 
really where we can uh, improve upon with these connectors. But first and foremost, you can see uh, this connector here is a full metal RJ45 connector. The previous version did have uh, a lot more plastic around it. So this really expands the Harding portfolio to have um, uh, a different variation for applications that may uh, need a full metal RJ45. Now with that, it still uh, has that uh, IDC termination that doesn't require any special crimp tooling. Really, anyone with a, a standard toolbox could assemble it. And again, of course, in, in, in true Harding fashion, it is very robust and, and truly geared for the industrial uh, industry. So how about transmission rates? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, in line with industry trends, this is a connector that could be used up to CAT 6A transmission. Um, and in addition to that, it is also compliant with all PoE classes, right? So this is, if you want to power a device over that same cable, power over ethernet, it is capable of all of those different class levels. But really, Peter, one of the best features, I think, or, or the most unique features for this product is the integrated cutting blades. Have you ever had the pleasure of uh, assembling an, a traditional RJ45 connector? I have, and unfortunately, I have to say it's not the easiest task. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think one of the most frustrating aspects is really dealing with those small 26 gauge wires, but really you can't get around that. Uh, but with traditional RJ45 connectors, you have these small wire managers. You have to uh, you know, untangle your wires, route them in in the small little wire manager, and it can be very frustrating. Um, and as you see in the picture here, however, with the RJ45 multi-feature, that wire manager is a little bit different, right? It allows you to fan out all of those wires. You can much easier see the different colors and where they're being routed. You'll also notice that they're all different lengths and there's no need to cut them down to a specific uh, length. You just wire them out where, when they're seated. All you have to do is close down this clamshell and the integrated cutting blades will cut the wires in that same swift motion. Um, and in turn, what this does is results in a 25% faster assembly. So this product certainly addresses the ease of use, but how about the flexibility aspect that you've mentioned? Now we know from what Arnold mentioned, uh, there's huge trends in miniaturization of devices, smaller devices, but it's not only limited to that, right? We're looking to add more functionality in terms of the cabinets, control cabinets, and, and really what this results in is a lot more cabling. And so what better way to optimize the, fa uh, the, the uh, space inside these cabinets than ensuring that the cable entries align with where they're going. So the multi-feature RJ45 is not only available in a traditional straight cable exit, but also in a 90 degree right angle, as well as a 35 degree angle to make sure that you're routing these cables where they need to go. Um, and it really also optimizes strain relief. Um, but in addition to that, these cable entries can also be rotated on all four different faces, right? So you can have it coming out of the right, like shown here. You can have it going out to the left, up or down. You can also change this out uh, after terminating the connector itself too. So it's a really flexible design. So looks like the RG45 multi-feature is a great solution when it comes to RG45 uh, connectivity. However, as we know now, the Ethernet connectivity is not just limited to the RG45 solution. So now we can look into this uh, pre-link system that can address uh, that, that topic. So Gora, let's talk about this uh, pre-link cube. And um, I'm sure a lot of... Um, our uh, viewers here are not really familiar with uh, what this is. Yeah, so this is a unique solution that Harding offers that really maximizes flexibility for systems that have a variety of ethernet uh, interfaces. And let me show you some examples here. Uh, so not only is the prelink compatible with RJ45 plugs, uh, like we've seen in some of the previous slides here, but also the jacks, right, in case you need to plug a, a, a connector into them. There's extenders if you need to extend a cabling ethernet system, but sometimes you need IP67 solutions and that where, that's where M12 connectors come in uh, or also our rectangular push-pull RJ45 connectors. Uh, and now really what this prelink cube does is it universalizes the termination uh, method to enable a barrier-free transition from one interface to another. 
Great, thank you. And that was a really good explanation, but I get a feeling that uh, additional video would provide some um, further details into, uh, into what the pre-link uh, truly is. I completely agree, Peter. Uh, let's roll the video. All right, you guys can see on the video here, there we have our ethernet cable as well as that pre-link cube. Um, and I think this video really shows the scale and size of that cube. Uh, Peter mentioned some of the struggles of routing a cable with a connector attached. And this pre-link is, is small enough that you can write, route it through some tight spaces as shown there. Um, and then once you route it and you have it in the location that you need to connectorize, you can simply attach the M12 connector or an RJ45, whether it's the plug or it's the jack or um, really the, or the Han push-pull rectangular connector, um, a variety of different options that the pre-link could be utilized with as well as that extender. Uh, the assembly process is, is very quick, very easy, really uh, an optimized way to install network cabling again from one interface type to another. So this looks pretty interesting, but um, this really, what does this really mean um, for someone who is designing um, an ethernet network? Yeah, I think one of the, the key areas here is really the transition between an RJ45 and, and then something that uses a pin and socket uh, connection like uh, an M12, uh, Xcode or Decode, right, where there's crimp pins involved. And when you have all these different interfaces, whoever your installers are, they need to know how to uh, install all of these different termination technologies. Um, and at the end of the day, that could be a point of failure. Um, so really the pre-link enables you to have the same uh, reliable assembly process throughout these different interface types. And I think it really also provides some interesting efficiencies when it comes to the component stocking here too. Um, with the pre-link cube, you have that cube to stock and the one tool that, that's required to assemble. Um, so you don't need the crimp pins, you don't need the crimp sockets or any additional various tooling that's required uh, for these different uh, interfaces. Great points. And let me add something to that. Um, so Freelink, it's really an excellent solution um, for system applications that utilize multiple different ethernet connectors. Here, we could have common cable lengths. We could have cubes terminated to each length, each, uh, each end of the cable. And then we can utilize multiple connectors, as you mentioned, RJ45 and 12 push-pull and simply snap those connectors in after the cable is deployed. And that also brings additional point of the cable routing. As we mentioned earlier, one of the issue is sometimes it's simply not possible to route a finished assembly due to the connector size. So with the pre-link, we can have cubes attached to each end of the cable. We can route the cable first and then simply snap the connectors at the very end of that process. Peter, are these something that is off the shelf that Hartney can also, if someone doesn't want to attach this tube, is that something that, that we can offer for them as well? Right, to mention that, of course, what we can do at Harding is we can provide cables with those cubes already attached. We can provide multiple lengths so our customers can simply buy a finished cable with cubes attached and all they need to do is snap the connectors on each end uh, of that assembly. That's great to know. Um, but in, in the case that, that you know, uh, our customers or installers do want to attach their own cable. Can you speak a little bit to the different types of cables that Harding offers and I guess how they differentiate from, let's say the, the ethernet cable I have in my home? Yep, absolutely. So at Harding, not only we can provide fully finished cable assemblies, but we also have flexibility of providing a raw cable. So one big difference between the cable that's used in the industrial ethernet versus the cable that we normally use in our household is the robustness and additional shielding to protect that ethernet signal. So as far as our offering, we have various profinet style cables that can be used for anything from stationary to high flexible applications. We do offer a high variety of industrial ethernet cables, anything for CAT5, 100 megabit, all the way to CAT7A performance. And we do also have options with improved shielding for applications and situations where uh, we experience higher EMI uh, interference. Um, in addition to that, we do also support new technologies, as Arnold mentioned, single per Ethernet. So we do have specialized cable just to address these types of applications. So in addition to a fully finished cable assemblies that we can provide for single per Ethernet, we do also offer raw cable, and as Arnold already mentioned, connectors. So our customers not only can buy 
fully finished cable assemblies for us from us for single per ethernet, but they can purchase cable connectors and make those assemblies themselves. So we have explored already various ethernet connectors, cable assemblies, raw cable, and let's take a few minutes to look at different advantages that fully finished cable assemblies can provide to us and also advantages that we can utilize from buying raw cable and connectors and making these assemblies ourselves. So if we look at finished assemblies, uh, when we buy those, we really don't need any specialized tooling. So we simply purchase those assemblies and we can deploy them very quickly. Uh, fully finished assemblies are also more cost effective simply because manufacturing facilities who make these assemblies have already optimized the cost of manufacturing. Therefore, we get a product that's already cost optimized. And at the end of the day, we really get a plug and play solution because all we have to do is connect each end of an assembly to a device that we want to interconnect. Now, on the other hand, there are also benefits of utilizing raw cable and connectors simply because we don't need to know the end length of the assembly. So when we purchase fully finished assemblies, we have to specify the length we want. And in some situations, what can happen is we buy an assembly that's simply too short. So we cannot unfortunately utilize that. With purchasing raw cable and connectors, we can make assemblies ourselves. So then we can determine what that length need to be at the very end of the whole process, which turns into an ease of deployment. As we already mentioned, it is sometimes impossible to route fully finished cable assemblies. So in this case, we can simply route the cable and then terminate connectors at the end. And lastly, we have a great flexibility when it comes to modification of these assemblies, because we decide at the very end what connector we want to terminate into a cable. And we can also rework these assemblies if needed ourselves. Thank you, Peter. I think that really breaks down um, the different uh, reasons why one would get a finished cable assembly versus the, the components and, and cabling. Um, and really at the end of the day, I think we're saying that Harding can offer either. So last but not least, uh, let's talk a little bit about interface plugging, uh, particularly when it comes to circular connectors, the, the metric circular series. So Peter, when you see this, what do you think? Well, what I see here is a lot of circular B to be M12 um, receptacles, looks like 16 of them. Yeah, absolutely. It's a lot of M12 connectors, but really what I think about is how close they are and how many there are, and that it's gonna be a pain to assemble. Now it's no fault of this device, right? As Arnold mentioned, with the needing to miniaturize devices, it's uh, only fair that all the interfaces have to be uh, put closer together. But again, each and every one of these will have to be screwed down. And if you're really connecting to spec, you're also gonna to need to be using a torque tool and perhaps even a specialized torque tool uh, because of how close those connectors are. Um, that's not even really speaking to if uh, you need to service this, right? If you need to service one single port on these um, or if you need to uh, troubleshoot and need to unscrew every single one to, to see what the, the problem area is. So, um, we actually even conducted a time study on this that we would like to share with you guys. In this particular time study, we're actually using a Harding uh, Ethernet switch using a decode ports, right? So that's a Cat5 uh, Ethernet switch. You can see uh, uh, we're still torquing down that first port right there. Um, again, it's important to torque uh, down, particularly in high vibration, high shock environments um, to ensure that you're really uh, not gonna have any intermittent uh, signals and, and you're, you're compliant and um, make sure that, that it stays put in those uh, dynamic uh, environments. We even had to speed the video up here for you so you didn't have to uh, wait too long. All right, screwing down the last one here. You can see how many cables there are. And if you need to service one of them, you're gonna to have to sort of weave your hand in between uh, and unscrew it there as well. In terms of the time, uh, we've clocked it in at three minutes, 43 seconds. Um, now, again, this is certainly better than having to hardwire. Uh, these connectors, right, Peter? Absolutely. Um, 
But we've been talking about all this, all the, the sort of negativity, right, be, behind these M12 connectors. Um, what, what's the alternative here? So yes, definitely. Uh, unfortunately, there, there is an alternative. Um, so Harding offers a M8 and M12 push-pull solution. Um, and what this is, is simply with that technology, we can push in a connector to the receptacle with the, without doing all of these uh, torquing and screwing down of the connector um, to, uh, to the housing and to the receptacle. Uh, and simply to disconnect the solution, we can just pull on the connector and disconnect it from the, um, uh, the receptacle. That sounds really easy. And it sounds like it would solve this problem, but would you say it's, is it still reliable? It seems like it may not be as reliable as screwing down the, the, the traditional M12 connectors. Certainly, even though it might appear that uh, this push-pull technology is not as secure as screwing down the connector all the way into the receptacle. However, Harding did test this technology uh, against the heaviest shock and vibration requirements. And in fact, the push-pull uh, type of unlocking is as reliable as a standard screw-in technology when it comes to withstanding shock and vibration and also providing the high IP rating to protect um, our solution from water and dust. Thanks, Peter. That's definitely good to know. And let's take a look at that time study again, but this time with our push-pull uh, connectors. You'll notice it's actually the same switch, um, and we'll address that topic in, in a moment here, but um, you can instantly see already, right? Now you already have two of the M12s plugged in. It's very quick, no need for that torque tool, right? Especially if it's specialized and that slim torque tool, really anyone uh, doesn't need to, to have it. You, can, you don't need any tooling, really. And definitely it brings a great point because sometimes if that torque tool is not used properly, if we don't maintain that um, torque value, we can find out that after a certain amount of, amount of time of the connection being exposed to high shock and vibration, like in the railway industry, we could have that connection getting loose, and then we might lose the, uh, uh, the Ethernet communication from a device to another uh, section of the network. With the push-pull, simply we snap the connector in, and we don't have to worry about maintaining that proper uh, torque value. Yeah, and there is an audible click as well. So you can really hear when it's engaged and in place and can see the time difference here as well. Just under a minute for the push pull. Um, and it was that, that, that three minutes, 40 seconds for, uh, for the traditional screw type. So yes, definitely the rapid connection is great. Um, but um, for example, are Harding M8 and M12 push-pull connectors compatible with other vendors on the market? Yeah, that's a great question, Peter, right? We know that traditional M12 connectors are very standardized in the industry, um, but I'm happy to say that the push-pull connectors are as well. The M8 and M12 push-pull connectors are standardized under this IEC 61076-2 standard. Um, and not only the push-pull connectors that we showcased, and I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but it had this outer locking sleeve um, where it, the sleeve goes over these housings here and, and engages that, that push-pull locking uh, system. But there's also an inner locking push-pull system that is standardized under this, this IEC spec. Um, and what that enables you to do is actually have devices that have re recessed receptacles, such as here, and you can have a really nice flush device uh, when utilizing that push-pull technology. So definitely having standardized interfaces, especially for uh, industrial automation and industrial ethernet applications is a key topic and a key feature to ensure easy integration. Uh, so it's definitely good to know that this is the case for, uh, for these uh, connector types. Um, however, as we all know, the M12s have been around uh, for many, many years. There are a lot, around a lot of the, uh, the screw down versions. Um, so I think it might be, um, difficult for some manufacturers to switch to this new rapid um, connection method. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point, uh, Peter. You know, transitioning to any new technology, um, even the ones that Arnold mentioned, right, is th there's a curve to it, there's a process, there's an adaption curve. But, but I will say, I think with these M12 push-pull connectors, that, uh, that adaption is quite easy, and I'll show you why. The Harding jacks that have enabled 
push-pull grooves, but they're also compatible with the traditional screw type M12s. There's threads inside this jack, and then there's also, again, the, the push-pull contours on the outside. So um, you can utilize the push-pull uh, plugs that are available uh, on the market, but also you could utilize the traditional screw types that are available. And actually nothing shows this more than that time study that we showcased, right? You notice that we're using the same ethernet switch with the screw type, as well as the push-pull uh, connectors. Um, so again, a lot of flexibility there when designing in uh, the Harding push-pull uh, jacks. Oh, so it looks like at the end of the day, due to this flexibility that you just mentioned, there is really no risk uh, with designing uh, the new push-pull style M12 connectors to new applications. So uh, we've covered the ease of use and flexibility, but how about the range um, of this product? So I see um, on the screen here, we have a four pin M12 decode. Um, how about other styles of M12, let's say M12 X code and some other coding options? Yeah, sure, Peter. Well, it is industrial ethernet week. So we certainly have the decode for CAT5, and then we also have the X code uh, for, for gigabit transmission available in a push pull style. But of course we have to mention beyond that, uh, it is available in the, the sort of the most commonly used M12, which is the M12A code. Push pull is available for that, as well as um, power, like the L code, uh, the S code, the K code, um, and even the, y, the new Y code that um, Arnold had mentioned uh, during his portion for the hybrid data and power uh, connections. Um, so again, a lot of flexibility, a lot of different options that enables you to have a single device that has power, data, and signal all on the same panel with that push-pull uh, feature functionality. Well, everyone, thank you for listening. This wraps up the installation technology portion uh, of the presentation here, and I would like to invite uh, Arnold back as well as Casey uh, to the stage here. Thank you, Gouda, and thank you, Peter. Very well done. <clears throat> As a summary, we talk about some market trends, miniaturization, and industrial ethernet taking over field bus communication protocol. So we also share how we at Harding approach innovative miniaturized solution without jeopardizing the quality and the robustness of our product. And finally, you learn how our solution are both efficient and user-friendly on the field. So on behalf of the whole Harding team, we want to thank you for joining this event. And we would like to take a few questions. We are five minutes before the hour. So before we are joining this session. Wonderful, thanks everybody. So we have received a few questions and from the audience, please feel free to add more as we go through. Uh, the first question I'd like to direct to Peter uh, so I know we talked a little bit about the reliability of the push-pull, and I think sometimes when you watch the videos, it's unbelievable how much faster this push-pull is. Can you talk about some of the applications where we've seen the push-pull be really successful? Yep, absolutely. So we've already seen uh, push-pull, uh, specifically M12 push-pull, uh, being utilized in the railway industry, mm -hmm. right? Um, especially when we have installations inside of the uh, railway vehicles where um, Ethernet switches with uh, high port density are used. We talk about basically 16, 24 ports. As you can imagine, it will take time to connect all of those ports. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, making sure that the connection is done properly with the proper torque value to maintain that uh, shock and vibration characteristics. So here with so much difference as far as the connection process, we can see a significant time saving when making all of these connections, which then can translate into cost saving because the installations have to be done by uh, technicians, and of course, everything is charged by the hour. So more time we can save, more money uh, we can uh, also put back into our pocket. Yep. And I know that the railway represents some of the most rigorous shock and vibration requirements that we've seen. Can you speak a little bit to the environmental um, design aspects of the push-pull as well? Sure. So as I mentioned, um, um, push-pull, specifically for the M12 being um, uh, and 12 technology it has to provide a higher IP protection rating, right? Mm -hmm. So these connections have to be utilized in uh, very dusty, very dirty environments. In uh, many cases, um, environments that do have um, uh, water ingress introduced to them. Mm -hmm. So with push-pull being an easy connection process, you might think that, well, do we sacrifice any uh, robustness, especially when it comes to the environmental protection? The answer is really no. 
So with a push pull, you get very rapid connection and you do maintain that high IP protection rating so that you can deploy these connections in pretty much any environment that normal M12 uh, would be utilized in. Yeah, perfect, thank you. I still think the video is the most compelling thing you can watch, right? Absolutely. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next question. Thank you for those who continue to submit. Uh, Goda, I'll hand this one to you. Are the pre-link components compatible with standard products? Yeah, that's a great question. So the installation technology, the termination method is unique to Harding, but when we talk about the interfaces themselves, they are very much uh, compliant to the RJ45 standards as well as the M12 standards. So it's all standardized. So you can very much have an RJ45 or an M12 that is not a pre-link style and then connect uh, the Harding pre-link to it. So it's all uh, very much uh, standardized to the industry uh, specifications. Perfect, perfect. Okay, uh, next one that's coming in is around, we've actually got a few that are on the IX connector. So this is one of our newer product that's out. And as Arnold was describing earlier, it really is speaking to that miniaturization mega trend that we're seeing in the market. So Arnold, for you, I know there's a lot of pressure right now on our customers to make sure that they have second sources lined up for everything. Is the IX a proprietary connector? Uh, no, I think this is a straightforward uh, answer, uh, no. So this IX actually has been approved by the standard committee, the mm -hmm. IEC. So we have some of our competitors that provide the same solution on the market. So there's no fear to having and use this connector and have the fear of, you know, being hiding just the only um, supplier providing this. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And I know as, um, as I've seen when we design in these products, a lot of times what we see is in an application, you'll have a mixture of our more traditional products like RJ45 and then newer products like IX or even our single pair Ethernet T1 connector. Peter, can you speak to our solutions that are available to help customers transition from T1 to IX as an example? Sure, absolutely. So um, one difficulty would be uh, to realize that uh, we cannot have an IX industrial to T1 industrial cable assembly. So I've mentioned earlier that we have a great flexibility of um, providing mixed uh, configuration assemblies where we could have IX industrial on one end and let's say RJ45 on the other. Unfortunately, this is not possible with uh, having IX to T1 simply because T1 is a brand new technology. However, uh, we do have solutions where we can actually interconnect um, standard ethernet network utilizing RG45 mm -hmm. and single per ethernet network. And this is done with uh, what Arnold already mentioned, um, not gateways by, but uh, media converters and specialized ethernet switches where Harding has designed switches that can take T1 connection and RG45 connection to make that easy transition between your standard eight wire ethernet network and T1 uh, single per ethernet network. Perfect, thank you. And I will jump in as well. Uh, Harding does offer IX industrial ethernet switches as well, right? So instead of having to convert to from an IX to RJ45, we already offer ethernet switches that are very compact um, and use those IX industrial um, interfaces. But I'll just add actually in regard to T1 industrial that will support the single pair ethernet, this is a complete new technology and the ecosystem is different compared to the standard ethernet. Mm -hmm. So from the cheap manufacturing uh, perspective, is, is a different completely uh, chip or semiconductor we use to, to clean the signal and make sure the signal is, is clear. Perfect, so I think we have time for one more question before we wrap. Uh, this one will be for Arnold. Great question in from our audience, thank you. Is it possible to have both power and data within the single pair ethernet technology? Yes, the response is um, yes. Like the <clears throat> RJ45, the PoE, power over ethernet with the T1 industrial or the single pair ethernet technology, we talk about the PUDO, the so-called PUDO, so mm -hmm. power over data line. So you have a chipset that will enable the power to be transmitted as well as the data on the same cable. You have to have it, this chipset on the, on both ends, the send side and receptacle side, the receive side. Perfect, thank you. Nothing like an acronym to close out our session, right? I love that one. So thank you everyone for joining day two of Harding's Industrial Ethernet Week. We are so appreciative of your time. If you have any questions, please feel free to continue to drop them in the chat and one of our excellent product managers will get back to you via email. I'd like to invite you to tune in again tomorrow. We have some excellent speakers. Tomorrow's topic is single pair ethernet, how it's revolutionized, uh, it's gonna be a revolution in industrial ethernet. 
And we have some excellent partners joining us tomorrow. We have Rockwell Automation, Analog Devices, and Worth. So they'll be able to bring some perspective on how they're implementing single pair ethernet and how they see things changing as well. So thanks again, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.